Hey guys, Steph here. I'm about to go live on Instagram with an ask me anything. So come join me over on Instagram and ask your questions in the comments or come live with me to showcase your business and your amazingness. So we'll go live here. I'm just going to share this into our group. If you haven't joined us already, come join us over at work smarter, not harder free community group. And right now for the next half hour, I'm doing ask me anything on Instagram. The link is there. Here we go. So share this group, invite your friends into our work smarter, not harder group. Here we go. All right. Let's go live on Instagram. So if I'm not looking over here, it's because I'm looking on my Instagram. Oh, fix the hair. Hey guys, Steph here, and we're doing a Ask Me Anything um, segment. So come on, join me, ask in the comments, or you can actually hit the request button to join. If you're on Facebook, come on over to Instagram. We're doing it there, and you can showcase your own business on my profile. All right, guys, so I'm going to pull up the questions we have here. If you're here live with me, go ahead and ask your questions in the comments. If you are brave enough and you want to come on live with me, that would be amazing. Um, what will happen is you will actually pop up on the screen too. So it'll be both of our faces. You can tell us what your business is, ask your questions, loving all the hellos. Let me know where you're joining from. All right, somebody's requesting to join. <gasps> Carly, let's see. Carly Gillis. I'm going to pull up our questions from. Carly, what's up, my friend? Thanks for joining. No problem. I can't stay on the whole time, but I'll be on for a little bit. Awesome. So I think it's, um, so tell us your name, who you help, and your question. Like, I was thinking of some questions before I started, so we'll see if I remember them. But okay. <laughs> so I'm Carly. I'm in Halifax right now, actually, but usually I'm in the Valley in Middleton. And I do like online yoga and wellness. And currently, I'm just doing some free stuff through face, like a Facebook group, um, and on my Instagram. And I'm currently in the works of trying to like move from that to like actually being able to like sell something. So that's where I'm at right now. Awesome. <laughs> but yoga, yes, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Love it. All right. So, so your question I, is. So I had two questions. One would be. Um, what's like the best way to reach out to people who aren't necessarily like already in your community, like who aren't necessarily following you already on social media and stuff? Like how, can, how do you get your stuff out there for people to see that like aren't already following you? Great question. So the question is guys, how do you get your information out? Um, if they're not already in your community. So one of my favorite ways and actually how I built nourish and you were a part of is collaboration. So I love uh, collaborating with other business owners to lift each other higher. So just like we're doing here, people will do something if there's a good reason. So if you're adding value to their life, to their business, they're going to want to do it. So um, it's a good point of contact. So you're not necessarily asking them for something without them getting something in return. So something like this, right? I reached out to you and I asked you if you had a specific question and we both benefit. So that would be my recommendation there is people love value so they're going to follow you if you're giving them good content and the law of reciprocity you buy me a coffee i'm going to want to buy you a coffee so that's a great way to get started i love interview style so um pod getting on other people's platforms that sort of thing so that's what i would suggest is inviting people on your platform sharing um as long, yeah, inviting people onto your platform, asking to go on other people's platforms would be a great way to get started. Um, and then as simple as giving them something to inviting them into a group, something that would be of value to them and either their business or their life. Cool. Does that answer, answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> um, and my second one was like, not necessarily a question, but just if you have any tips on how you can, like right now I don't actually have something that I'm necessarily selling, 
like I'm just doing free stuff and trying to like get my name out there a bit. But once I actually start selling something, like what would be your best tips for, you know, trying to encourage people to do your program or do whatever it is that you're selling without seeming like pushy and in their face, like being like, this is what I'm offering. Like you should try it. Like I don't have to just say that kind of stuff. Yeah. So again, it's a value offer. So if you're offering people value on your channels, they're there for a reason. And it takes, it used to be 10 impressions. It takes up to 15 impressions on social media for somebody to actually press the purchase button. So as long as you're offering value, I always say 90% value, 10% sell or share your offers. So as long as you've offered a ton of content, you can you're allowed to sell. And at the end of the day, if people don't want to be on your platform or don't want to hear your offer, they don't have to be. So really it's more about it's storytelling. It's sharing our, our stories. And I've never been one to be a salesperson or, you know, even when I had full-time sales rep jobs, I did well because I connected with people on a human level, built relationships and shared stories and values. So that's what I would suggest is you don't actually ever have to feel like you're selling because what you have to offer is valuable and it's helping their lives. Right? So as soon as we can kind of get our mind wrapped around the fact we're not selling, we're actually enhancing people's lives and you would be giving your following, you would be doing them a disservice if you didn't share with them a possibility to move further than just the free content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, those are my two main questions. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for joining. I love, one of the main things I love about Carly is she will just pop on live video. I've done interviews with Carly. She's an action taker, which means you will have a successful business because action is the name of the game. Thanks for joining, and I don't know how to pop you off, but maybe you know how. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Let's see. I, I could probably just click the X, and maybe I'll sign off. <laughs> All right. Thanks just, for yeah. joining. <laughs> yeah. Bye. All right, guys, who's up next? Anybody want to join me live? If they don't, I'm going to just scroll through the comments here and go from the top. All right, we've got Courtney in the house. We've got Nicole, Selene, Carly. Okay, Monica. First question is, Courtney asks, Steph, what are your daily methods of operation? All right, so number one order of business is to keep my vibration high. So I always joke around, hey guys, I'm going to yoga, I'm going to work, because nonetheless, if your vibration isn't high, don't sell, don't get in front of your people. So you have two, two main orders of business is to drive traffic to your offer. Granted you have an offer or something to sell and raise your vibration. If you don't feel good, don't drive traffic to your sale because you'll be attracting the wrong people and your messaging will come off weird. It just won't feel right. So two orders of business every day, get my vibe up and um, drive traffic to whatever I'm growing. And that's not driving traffic to everything in my business. It's driving traffic to one specific thing that I'm, I'm growing at this time. And with that said, it is very important to have, um, to understand that you're not always going to wake up with energy. So you deserve to have a morning routine to get yourself into that right vibe. It's not realistic as a business owner to just want to wake up out of bed and take over the world. Some days we'll feel like that. And some days we will also, um, especially at the beginning of our business, we will be able to do that. But no, if you wake up and you're not feeling awesome, you can listen to audios, you can go to yoga, you can meditate, you can do things that will actually raise your vibration. All that that means in non woo woo terms is make you feel good because your current vibe actually attracts your tribe, not who you want to be. So hang out with people or listen to audios of uh, people that you want to be like. All right, Courtney, did that answer your question? All right, we're moving down. Inner beauty movement, Selene, beautiful Selene asks, how to schedule your time throughout, throughout your week to get maximum flow and return on investment? How to schedule your time throughout the week to get maximum flow and return on investment? All right, so throughout the week, um, I'm really big on daily rituals. So morning routine, evening routine, having boundaries so that you don't get burnt out so that you can stay vibing high. Um, 
if you are a routine junkie and a schedule junkie, it's really good to have certain days for certain things um, and keeping yourself mostly in revenue generating activities. So throughout the week, if you know that by Friday you're pooped, schedule Friday off. Schedule Friday as your day that you just take care of you, self-care, that sort of thing. If you know you're motivated at the beginning of the week, you can do stuff that you maybe don't like as much, the paperwork and all of that. And um, it's really important to to get clear and figure out what your revenue generating activities are so that you don't waste time doing website stuff or non-revenue generating activities and then you burn yourself out and all of a sudden nobody is driving traffic to your sales. So throughout the week, um, while setting up your clarity calendar, it's really important to pay attention to how you vibe. So if you have a lot of just pay attention to when you have the most energy, when you're the most irritable, that sort of thing. And you can build it out. Um, and let me know in the comments if you have certain things that you do each day. I know for me, I do things on um, each day rather than the week. So I know I have my morning routine, my evening routine, and um, certain activities that I have to do by the end of the week to make sure my business is running. One of them is actually live video. When I'm in growth mode or, or launch mode, if I go live once a day, I'm doing my job. Going live once a day for me is a revenue generating activity, huge, and keeping my vibration high. All right, so next question. Let me know if that, um, you guys are all business owners. Let me know in the comments something you do every day or every week that keeps you in the flow and making sure you're making money. Okay, next question. Linda asks, Steph, how often should we go live to boost visibility with our audience? As often as you can. Just kidding. Okay, so the thing with live video is consistency is key. Your audience loves it. It's good for your mental state in your own business, as well as Facebook and Instagram owned by the same guy, Mark Zuckerberg. He loves consistency. So if you show up consistently on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a daily basis, he's going to say, oh, this person's serious about their business. Let's push their stuff in front of more people. So more important than often, consistency is key. All right. What else do we have here? Hey, Ryan. Okay, Linda asks, I'm just going in order, guys, of the comments. Um, what is your top tip for us to do daily to boost visibility? Live video is great. Getting on other people's platforms, huge. So you guys, I love to showcase and host health coaches on my platform. So if you're scared to go live, come live with me in my free group, Work Smarter Not Harder. We have a free go live for five challenge. You can join. Just send me a message on Instagram if you want to join that up. And um, we can actually go live together and you can come on my platform or I can go on yours. So that would be um, my number one tip to boost visibility is get on video and on other people's platforms. Okay. Next question. Okay. So inner bliss gems, my girl, Jen, this is her Mala company. She has some questions over on Facebook. I'm just going to check here. Jen says, how important or necessary is it to be the face of your brand? more important when it's a service or also when product. Okay, so I'm a firm believer that yes, you are the brand. If you're, if you're, yes, it is very important as you're as a small business owner to be the face of the brand if that's where you vibe high. The key to owning a business and having success is vibrating or <laughs> I should start using, stop using that word is to hang out in your zone of genius. So if your zone of genius isn't to be in front of people, don't do it. Hire somebody to do that. Um, so that's what more of what it is. It's um, staying in your zone of genius. So as the business owner, if your zone of genius is relationships, commun uh, communication, getting on camera, absolutely you can be the face of your brand. If getting photo shoots done and being the face of your brand makes you scared and vibrate low, don't do it because then you won't attract the right people. So that would be my answer to that question. All right. Thank you, Jen. And Jen's business is Inner Bliss Gems. Okay. Jad asks, Jad and I have been doing HIIT workouts. Um, so Jad's a fitness instructor. And Jad asks, how do I deal with people who always want free advice? I love this question. 
okay, Jed, I once upon a time was so resentful when people were asking me for free advice because I was burnt out and I had way too much on the go without somewhere to drive people. So now when people ask me for free advice, I'm like, oh, come with me to my free offer. Because what that is, is it's actually a, a sales funnel. So without being cheesy or creepy, that's what we do online is we take people from not knowing us to liking, knowing, and trusting us through a free offer like you do with your free challenges. And then the key piece here is then having something to sell. And I always love having two things to sell, a signature offer, a high ticket item. They're, you know, they're paying for your time. It's, it's big bucks. And then a lower ticket item that's completely passive. So it takes nothing for you to run. So that's the system. Oh, thank you for your question. That's a great question. Here's my free go live for five challenge. Here's my free lunch challenge. Here's my free Facebook group, right? So instead of um, getting mad or resentful for all these questions, you're like, great, here's my free stuff. And then once they've warmed up a bit and decided if they like, know, and trust you, they can then purchase your low ticket item or your signature offer. So that's my answer to that question there. As well, free, uh, t keep track of all their questions. Um, it's your platform. You don't have to ask uh, or answer people, right? With um, keep track of their questions, and then you can use those questions to build your content. So it's actually valuable to get these questions from if they're your ideal client from these people asking you. Okay. Okay, so Eat Well Halifax, Nicole Marchand asks, what are your favorite free offers and lead magnets? Okay, my favorite free offers are something that adds a ton of value to your client, to your ideal client, and it's no work for you. So um, let me think here. PDFs are getting kind of old. I know I'm not really opting into those. I love challenges actually because it gets you to, it, it all depends on what your end goal is. So if your end goal is to sell a one-on-one -on -one coaching, you're going to want to do a free offer that your client gets to kind of know you. So this could be a free challenge where they actually have access to you. Always keep your challenges to five days. Um, longer than that, people get um, kind of discouraged as well. Um, yeah, five days for challenges. So that would be one of my favorites is a really quick challenge. Um, another free offer that's totally passive for me that I use a lot is a free Facebook group. So I have a drop 10 pounds group for my other brand, my health brand nourish. So people get a free ebook in there. They get the community support. I can upload as much content as I want and it's completely passive for me. So they get my, to answer your question, my best free offers are you blow their socks off. They're a ton of value. People get to know your brand um, and it's no work for you because when people are coming to you with questions, you want to give them a free offer that doesn't drain you, right? It's no work for you, but it still gives them a good taste of who you are. Um, so that would be either a really quick challenge, five days, or um, I love Facebook groups. P Facebook pages are kind of dying. Facebook groups pack it with value, a reason for them to join. And then you have a targeted audience for when you're going to sell or share your offer. Okay, so that's all the questions for here. I'm going to check our questions that were posted on um, my last post on Instagram. If you are brave enough to come live with me right now, do it. We'll showcase your brand. We'll get your face out there. Maybe it's your first video on Go Live for Five Challenge. What that is is we um, go live for five, either five days consistently, so once a week, five days in a row, or just five minutes, guys, because it's really getting the first one done is the hardest, I promise you. Um, okay, another question from Carly. I love this, guys. Um, what are your favorite platforms, Facebook groups or pages? Never mind, you just answered that. Absolutely, Facebook groups. Facebook pages have it as a platform, but don't get um, sad when, you, when your page doesn't reach anyone because your page is only going to reach 2 to 3% of your page likes. So don't be sad when your page posts, see no one. A way to get around that is live video. Um, Facebook groups are actually my favorite. That's how I grew Nourish and you can really nurture your audience there. Um, I'm just getting into Reddit. I've gotten quite a few um, links to my to my website through Reddit. So that's the new platform I'm going to I'm going to try. 
Right now, Instagram's my favorite. Basically, you wanna think, where's your ideal client already hanging out? You don't wanna have to pull them over to your website. So if they're already on Instagram stories, hang out there. As well, um, repurpose your stuff. So just like we're going live here, I'm live on Facebook, I can download that video, put it onto YouTube, um, put it, you know, a link onto Twitter or a link onto Reddit. So my favorite platform right now is Instagram, specifically Instagram Stories and Instagram Live. Second would be Facebook groups, absolutely. Have a landing page, um, business page, because people will often look for you on Facebook and Instagram before they'll look for you on the web. Um, and then YouTube I love as well. My YouTube channel is ridiculously scattered and it's a goal for 2018 to clean it up. Podcasting is where I, so you, you look at your ideal client. Where's your ideal client hanging out? Podcast is where I hang out and my ideal client is a health coach wanting to grow their business. So I know I need to get on podcasting. So again, another goal for 2018. All you guys can be on my show. Um, okay, that's enough for that. Um, okay, let's answer some questions that were left on the post and I'll double check Facebook. Okay, so um, Jen from, asks, do you pay for Facebook or Instagram ads? Thoughts? I personally don't, but you can. So here's the thing. Visibility. You want to get in front of people. You either need to do it organically, organically, like a granola person, me, or pay for ads. Ideally, you can do a little bit of both. I personally haven't gone into the paying for ads realm. Um, if you want uh, to do that, there's experts on that. I don't teach it because I've, I've never done it. I've, um, yes, it's possible. So basically, if you have time, do organic. If you have money, do ads. That's the easy answer for that. Um, personally, I'm getting numb to the sponsored ads. I don't click on them. So pay attention to what you do, what your ideal client would do. Would your ideal client click on a sponsored ad? So that being said, I found my business coach three years ago from a sponsored ad. Times change. Um, so when in doubt, always think from a place of would your ideal client want that? Not would you want that? Would your ideal client want that? Let me know in the client in the comments your ideal client if you've worked on niching down and determining exactly who you're meaning to connect with. Okay. Okay. Questions from Chef Kim. Hey, buddy. Okay. Food intuition. Chef Kim has a question. I just jumped on. Da, 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 not sure. If okay. In terms of scheduling, what is your approach to creating space in your day slash week for personal time? All day, every day. Okay. So my mantra is work smarter, not harder. I built my last brand to have the freedom to do what I want when I want. I actually built my last brand so that I didn't ever have to be anywhere. I could do whatever I wanted because I had burnt myself out. I wanted the complete opposite as well as I do 10 day meditation. So it's possible to run your business completely hands off, completely automated. That's what I did for nourish. Not now I I'm, working with a new niche health coaches and I love actually working with them. So I do, I I'm on the phone with them bi-weekly for an hour. Um, so that's how I schedule. So it's always, always schedule your personal time first and then open up slots for your clients after that, because you can be of no service to anyone if you are drained. So absolutely slot your personal time in there first. If your calendar is empty, awesome. If that scares you, then actually slot in your personal time. I, I personally like having a blank calendar to do what I want when I want, but I know that that can stress some people out. And, um, if it makes you feel better to actually schedule stuff in, do it, schedule in your morning routines, your yoga, whatever you need to do so that your calendar actually looks full, but do that first and then open up your calendar and your slots to work. Okay. And on, in my opinion, that's the number one order of business. Business is not a first priority because if you put it before your personal needs, your family needs, then you won't be happy and your business will not do well. Okay. Here we go. So we're going to my last post here. Um, we've got some questions. Let's see. Do, 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 do. 
Okay, so Leslie, good old Leslie. Uh, okay, Leslie writes, would love to know tips on showcasing your business in a non-pushy way. How much free content should we give out? Okay, so kind of answered this at the beginning of the video, but basically 90% value, 10% sell, share. So you're just sharing your story, you're sharing your offers. Um, that would be my answer to that. 90% value, 10% share. All right, Taylor says, what drives you to become involved in the health industry? Well, my friend, I'm actually jumped over to the business industry. Although most of my teaching is on how to be happy as a business owner, how to take care of your mind, that sort of thing. So it still is health. And then my automated business nourish is totally health. So to answer your question, what drives you to become involved? When I did, when I ran nourish, my driving factor was my own freedom. Now my driving factor is to help you guys have the freedom. So that's my driving fa factor in running my business now is to help other health coaches have that freedom and flexibility. So we're not working 14 hour days. And why that fires me up is because that was my story and my struggle for years. I yo-yoed with my business and I never could get it off the ground. So I was burnt out and really not healthy. So that's what drives me to do what I do today is actually helping others get that freedom that I finally figured out after years and years of struggle. Okay. Strive up fitness. What is your number one tip for health coaches or feel is the most important in growing a business in the health industry? My number one tip, which is the number one step in my four step system to success is to clear clutter. You cannot create magical things. If you're filled up to the top, if you try to work on your business, when you're already stressed out, you're actually going to spill over and hate your business and suck at life and business. So my number one tip would be to clear clutter and get super, super empty, get rid of stuff that isn't great. Sometimes when we're working as health coaches, we have a good life. And we have to let go of good opportunities to make room for the great. Okay, what do we got for time? Okay, three more minutes. I keep fixing my hair. I'm like a weird obsessor right now. Okay, Emily, Emily, Emily Bush, Emily Bush, I love you. Emily Bush and I started um, Nourish Together. So Emily says, how do you work with the new Instagram algorithm to ensure your stuff is seen? A lot of videos, girlfriend, and Instagram stories. So where are people hanging out? Instagram stories and live videos. Um, and don't get too caught up with the algorithms. He's going to change them all the time. So always have multiple platforms, multiple ways to reach your, your client and get in front of your, your clients. Okay, Linda Heredia says, I have another question. How do you create your videos with text and voiceover? What is your favorite tool for us to use to boost billability? Okay, so we already answered that. So to create videos with the voiceovers, I use Clips, C-L-I-P-S, on my iPad, that app. Um, I also have InShot on my phone, I-N-S-H-O-T. If someone can write that in the comments, InShot on the phone and Clips app on the iPad. And then iMovie on iPads and iPhones is really good too. Okay, so Kim asks, hey, do you have a strategy to help you make decisions when given multiple opportunities? Yes, say no to everything. Say, oh, thank you for that opportunity, I'll get back to you. And then you go back and you check, is this in, in alignment with my five-year, 10-year goals, my global vision? Is this in alignment with, with everything I stand for? And then you can you can answer from a place of, um, coming from, is this in alignment with your true values rather than just reacting on the fly? If it's not going to, um, help you on your path, say, no, no, thank you. Um, or you don't have time in your schedule at this time. You'll get back to them when you do. Um, okay. And then Linda also asked favorite tool to use to boost visibility. We answered this, but it's basically, um, getting on other people's platforms and um, leveraging getting elsewhere. <laughs> Hopefully with the same ideal client as you. Okay. Okay, Strive Up Fitness. Is there such thing as posting too much? No, the, the rule is like once a day on your Instagram feed um, 
and you can do as many stories as you want. Ask your ideal client what they like. Like if they just passed your whole story, if you posted so much, um, bottom line is always ask your ideal client what they prefer. Um, and you can always post on different platforms if you're just, uh, or bank your content. If you're in content creation, just bank it all. And then uh, and post in different groups that you have so that it's specific. And if you're confused of how, where to post and what to post, always think, does my ideal client want to hear this? Is this the right platform for, am I putting out the right content for who is watching or who I've um, drawn into this channel? Okay, Kristen Zendrin Nutrition Fitness asks, what's one thing you do personally each day that helps to keep you on track with your business goals? Each day, um, my boundaries I think would be the number one thing is um, I'm really strict with my phone. I run my business online, so I'm not gonna be on my computer and phone 24 seven or else I would probably not be doing my business. I'd be burnt out. So. One thing that I do every day to keep in alignment would be to do a morning routine before I open my phone. I have a rough rule of like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. because I go to bed quite early, but that gives me enough time in the morning to do things for me first as well as at night because what we do before bed, it really impacts our sleep and our subconscious thinking. So the evening one uh, is very important so that you can wake up and not feel drained. And the morning routine is really important because if you step into reaction mode before you've taken care of yourself, bad things can happen. And a good example of this is um, if I get, you know, bad news and I've already done my morning routine and raised my vibe up, that bad news doesn't actually affect me the same way as if I had woken up and it was the first thing I saw. So boundaries, number one. Okay, and from Ryan, Ryan asks, how do you use hashtags and is there a strategy to it? Yes, there's a strategy to it. Um, use the hashtags that your ideal client would be looking under or trying to find. So don't use hashtags that you love. You can have like your specific hashtags, but nobody's really searching for that. So use the hashtags that your client might be looking under or might be following. Um, that would be my recommendation there. All right, guys, thanks for joining. I'm going to do this again because it was the best, most fun video I've done in a long time. So let me know in the comments if you want to join me live. I'll make this a consistent thing. And if you want to showcase your business on my platforms, let's go live together. I'll send you my calendar link. You can book in. And if you're scared, that's totally normal. Nobody really wants to go live. Um, and at the end of the day, only a few people will view the live. It's really for the recording. So if you absolutely hate it, we can just delete it. Um, we can also go live in a private community group, work smarter, not harder, so that you're, you can practice there. Um, yeah, cheers. That was awesome. Thank you so much for joining and having all the questions. I appreciate it so much. And um, we'll do this again. I'm off to Hawaii tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. <laughs> So finish packing and snuggle the dog and get to the airport nice and early. Thank you so much, guys, and I will talk to you soon.